I'm just going to give a simple overview of the accounting principles and QCs for the VCE course. We'll start with the principles which relate to the way we record financial information. And there's seven you need to know, starting with conservatism, which has two aspects to it. Number one, we record a loss as soon as it's deemed probable, and we don't record a gain until it's deemed certain, i.e. a sale being made. Thus, this prevents us overstating the revenue or the value of our economic resources, our assets, or prevent understating the expenses in our income statement or the external claims on the assets, the liabilities. Applications of this, well, if we've exhausted all means um, deemed pro probable, possible to actually recover a debt from a debtor, then we write it off as a bad debt to prevent understating our expenses. If we're given a number of estimates on an agreed value of a non-current asset that's, let's say, the owners contributed to the business, we go with the lowest estimate estimated figure to prevent us overstating the value of the assets. And we record the stock on hand in the balance sheet at cost, not the sale price, because it's not deemed certain that we will actually sell it for the marked up value. Something could happen. It could be stolen, could become obsolete, damaged, etc. Consistency. We must use the same accounting methods from one period to the next so that the users of the reports can make useful comparisons of the business performance over time. So if we classify our balance sheet into current and non-current, if we classify our um, cash flow statement into the operating and investing and financing, we must do it from period to period so that the users of reports can make those useful comparisons. We're not allowed to simply change depreciation methods from one period to the next in order to, let's say, increase our expenses, which would reduce the tax on our profit. So you can't simply just go from start off with straight line and then move to uh, reducing balance or the other way around, again, to help the users. Entity, the business is treated separately from the owner, thus personal transactions involving capital and drawings must be recorded separately from the business so that the Users of reports can evaluate business performance and financial position independently of the owner. Going concern, we assume the business is has an infinite life. Even if the owner only intends to have it for a short duration, the business will live on, according to this principle. Thus, we simply can't write any economic resources that will contribute to revenue in the future as expenses because if they're not going to be fully consumed during the period, then again, we're breaching the going concern principle. So again, if any economic resource that we purchase during the period is not going to be fully consumed, so equipment, vehicles, computer hardware, computer software, etc., these must be reported in the balance sheet as assets in order to comply with the GC principle. Evidence of the GC principle in your balance sheet Look out for things like accumulated depreciation, prepayments, accrued expenses or revenue in the balance sheet because, again, the going concern principle has dictated that these either haven't been fully consumed or there is still, still some type of obligation that's going into the next financial period in the, in the case of accruals. Historical cost principle, we record the asset at its purchase price, which can be verified by a source document, so a check butt, invoice, etc. Thus, we're ensuring that the reports are free from bias or error, uh, error. So again, even though it is more useful to have the carrying value reported in the balance sheet, which will be indicated after we deduct our act debt, the actual historical cost is reported in the balance sheet so that again, the reports are free from bias or error. Monetary unit, even when we deal with multinational corporations, we must convert our um, reports into Aussie dollars to help the users of, of the reports make those useful comparisons. And when you get to uni accounting, you'll look at uh, losses on exchange rates, etc. We don't do that in VCE, but again, the point is they must be converted to Aussie dollars to help the users of the reports. The reporting period principle, this is this is the one that will come up in, in the VC course more than any others. It applies to a lot of different topics. 
So under this principle, we must divide the life of the business into finite periods, maximum of a year. We could do it half yearly, quarterly, monthly, etc. And according to this principle, we must measure the performance. How do we do this? We calculate profit. There's two methods of doing this. There's the cash system, which you might learn about in, at university. In the VCE course, we do the accrual method. We recognise revenue when it's earned and expenses when they are incurred or used up. Thus, we record balance day adjustments for things like depreciation for the consumption of an asset, um, for prepayment expenses, the part that, again, the part that's been consumed, accrued expenses, etc. So therefore, this will require us to, again, do BDAs, which you'll learn in Unit 3 for accrued expenses, prepaid expenses, depreciation, and Unit 4 with the accrued and prepaid revenue. The QCs, now, principles relate to the way we record information. QCs relate to the way we report the information. And there's some overlap here with some of the principles. So comparability, massive overlap here with consistency. The reports must be comparable over time so that the stakeholders can compare performance in the income statement, financial position from the balance sheet, not only over time for the business, so we can look at historical trends, but also to similar um, businesses in the same industry. So we must use the same accounting method, e.g. depreciation. If we start off with reducing balance, we can't just simply switch to straight line just to maintain a sort of higher expense, which again reduces our profit to and will reduce the tax payable on the profit. This would be a breach if we altered our methods of the comparability QC. The relevance QC. I said reporting period principle is the one that comes up the most in the course. Well, this one would probably be the one that comes up the most in terms of the QCs for the Unit 3-4 course. According to this QC, all information that is um, recorded and reported in the accounting reports must be useful. It must be presented in a timely fashion, so no good finding out um, that we've got some obsolete stock two, two years after the fact. It must be recorded in the form of a stock write-down as soon as um, as soon as practical. The information must be relevant to the users and its material. So minor things, things that are uh, minor in cost, like stationary, we can actually write them off as expenses, even though technically we should do a stock take of our stationary to, given that under the um, definition of asset, that it is an economic resource that will help contribute to revenue to the next period. It's deemed, according to the relevance QC, a waste of time doing a stock take, so we can simply write off those trivial amounts because it's not going to influence adversely the decisions made by the users of the reports. So again, relevance QC dictates that we do balanced day adjustments so we can provide an accurate measure of profit for the period. So we record consumptions of, um, of things like non-current assets. We record the depreciation bad debts, accrual, accrued expenses, etc. The relevance QC dictates that we do closing entries for our revenue and expenses so we can zero off those accounts and help us provide a measure of profit per, for the period. Also, the relevance QC dictates that when we acquire an asset, let's say from the owner, that we record the agreed value and we provide the carrying value in the balance sheet by subtracting the act debt from the actual historical cost. Look out for questions, anything to do with belonging. Why does, say, bad debts belong in the income statement? Again, to basically comply with the relevance QC. And reliability. Reports should contain info that is verifiable via source documents. Again, this goes hand in hand with the historical cost principle. So we do stock takes so that we can provide an accurate measure of the assets in terms of verifying the value of the stock on hand. We retain source documents in the business for five years minimum so that again our, we're ensuring our reports are free from bias or error. We use source documents. This supports the audit trial. All, all journals record the source document including the GJ with the memo numbers and the use of control and subsidiary accounts 
means that we have an inbuilt cross-checking me me mechanism which again ensures we're providing relevant uh, reliable financial information. And finally, understandability. Reports should be prepared in a manner that are easy for users to comprehend. So this might include the use of pie charts, etc. And also the classification of reports. So let's say with our balance sheet, classifying it into current and non-current so it's easy for the users to evaluate the firm's liquidity. Thank you. I hope this has been of use.